Welcome to episode 5 of A Very British Park. If you haven't seen the previous four, then I have to ask, are you feeling okay? Were you expecting me to just explain four episodes of content? No. Go back and start with episode 1, please. Have you gone yet? Because I will wait. Last episode was an action-packed roller coaster ride. Get it? Because we built a roller coaster. I've had to spend the whole week just calming my excitement levels, and to be honest, I don't think I'm fully recovered. To be safe, this week I think we should take it easy. There are many mundane yet crucial parts of parks that people often overlook. However, those boring guest services and backstage areas happen to be my favourite bit. Who needs coasters anyway? With this in mind, we will be building our first toilet block, as well as the delivery warehouse and admin buildings. This is where you typically find things like accounting, marketing and the staff canteen. Last week, Harvey Swain commented saying they loved the voiceover, but wished I talked for more of the video. Once I could see past my giant ego, I took a look at my YouTube analytics. I know, big brain time. Viewer engagement has very distinct peaks whenever I start talking again. And so, you have spoken and I have listened. So this week, I will be trialling a new format, so let me know what you think. Without further ado, I present a time lapse with commentary. First of all, I laid down some foundations for our toilet block already captivating. I went with a rough concrete base and classic brick for the rest. To accent the eaves, I went with wooden beams from the Spooky DLC. I decided to create custom windows for the restroom using hydro beams, black panels, metal fences and glass. One downside to working from reference imagery is that I now have photos of public restrooms in my search history. As with any bathroom, ventilation is key. I added four AC units to act as extractors. Two for the men's, two for the women's. Despite Planet Coaster toilets being unisex, for added realism I created and labelled two toilets as per real life. Our extractor vents won't work without power, so I added an electrical box, cable rack, and then repositioned everything accordingly. The backside of a building like this would likely be seldom used, and thus overgrown. Considering the threat of an active railway, it seems only right to fence the area off and place some signage. For the roof, I use scallop tile with the 2 meter eaves. I then added a couple of small ventilation exhausts to the roof. For the side of the building, I felt it likely that the maintenance department would have a small bin store, plus access to the electrical box. I went with alternating sides for the gates as to obscure sight lines as much as possible.
service vehicles require access into and around the park during the closed season, so I added an 8 metre path from the delivery entrance connected to the existing wide paths around the park. I then started laying the foundations for the various admin buildings, using the same materials as the restrooms. The warehouse would need to be tall enough to house numerous large scenery items before being installed in the park, however the rest of the building could be normal height. I then decided to make the back end of the building a different material to give the impression of an extension being built as the park expanded. Because this roof has an awkward angle, I used Hydro's plaster walls as they come in a range of sizes and allow for ultimate control. It felt likely that the back of the building would be used as a fire escape so I laid down some path and fenced off the area. As you'll see later on, I never placed any doors or windows on this side of the building, because it seemed like a waste of piece count if it would never be seen. For the dock doors, I used black panels and basic shapes. I used the locomotive rail for the bottom of the shutter, created a small window, and framed everything with various beams. I placed some floodlights before copying the whole thing for the second door. What are floodlights without power? So I placed some cables connecting the two lights and then down to an electrical box. I then placed a box for the shutter controls and connected that to the existing cables. This felt like a sensible place for some security, so I added a CCTV camera and focused it on the relevant area. Whether this be the staff canteen or just a communal area, it would likely have a large skylight to let in some natural light. I created this by using wall pieces, beams, black panels and glass.
I then added a wooden trim to the bottom of the wall. Soon after, I realised I'd used the wrong type of wall for the extension, so I fixed my mistake. Once again, I couldn't find a window I was happy with, so I created my own using more beams. The middle window hurt my feelings, so I got rid of it and replaced it with a fire exit. Then, you guessed it, I added more beams. To avoid this whole area being pointless, I added a staff room to bring some life over here. Yet again, I created my own custom door, added more windows, brought over our trusty bathroom window some more electrical bits and pieces and a CCTV camera To stop staff walking through the corner of the building I buried a couple of barriers into the wall With lots more copy and pasting, I finished off the other building. To clutter up this roof a bit, I added AC ducting and a couple of dirt decals. For the trim, I used our trusty wooden beams to match the build style of the restrooms. Using this technique gives us an idea of which buildings were built at similar times. Another aspect that adds to the park's backstory. Despite not being a smoker myself, I like to accommodate for those that do. I created a simple concrete pad, fenced it off from public view, gave it a small curb, and then decorated. Last but not least, I lit the area using a combination of lampposts, floodlights and area lights to boost those that aren't bright enough. And there we have it, two areas that most people wouldn't give a second thought to, but yet we spend an entire episode on it. As you can tell, on this channel, we throw convention out of the custom made window. Did you prefer me talking over the time lapse, or are you just desperate for me to stop talking? Let me know in the comments. As always, enjoy the cinematics, and I'll see you next week.